to be put uh, together very quickly at the time of reflow. For some reason, the damage, the, the reperfusion damage occurs within minutes after uh, reopening the artery. So we have to apply the treatment either before reopening the artery or within these first minutes. Other way, if we are late, the protection is gone. The mechanism for that is unknown. You can see on this schematic representation that many signaling pathways have been in, involved in that, and we still don't know which one or, 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 may, or maybe several of them may be activated to protect the heart in these conditions. But we, we propose, and many groups propose, that something in mitochondria, which are very important for building ATP for contraction, is going wrong during ischemia and reperfusion. And, and one aspect of this called uh, mitochondrial permeability transition pore. And this, uh, this pore, this mega channel, may play a role in cell death at the time of reperfusion. Uh, and we uh, made, and with other groups, the hypothesis that ischemic post conditioning, this protective intervention, may in fact be protective by inhibiting the opening of this pore. Because when this pore opens, due to calcium accumulation or free radical production during ischemia and reperfusion, then this brings the cell to death. If you can block the opening of this pore by any means, then you can preserve a uh, uh, cell from dying. You can increase survival. And we hypothesized that this would be the case for post-conditioning. Why doing so? But simply because as I said before, post-conditioning is an intervention that acts during the first minute of reperfusion and is uh, limiting cell death. And because others, including the group by Alistrap and colleagues, have shown that poor PTP opening also occurs during the first minute of reperfusion. And this may be due, by the way, um, or triggered by restoration of uh, pH in the cells, and David Garcia Dorado has shown that there might be a link between recovery of pH and uh, cell survival after, after reperfusion. We have shown that in, in the rabbit model of acute myocardial infarction that preconditioning or postconditioning delay the opening of this pore, as shown on this graph, and also can reduce infarction, which shows that there is at least an association between acting on the mitochondrial permeability transition and reducing infarct size in animal models. Now, where do we go from this? These are animal or in vitro experiments. And uh, in 2004, uh, in France, with several colleagues, we decided that we, we should try to move this concept to clinics. And we did a very simple thing. We said, OK, we can do this in animals. Why would, couldn't we do it in, in patients in a safe, of course, and ethical uh, manner? So we took two groups of patients that were hospitalized within 12 hours uh, after the onset of chest pain for ST acute, uh, ST elevation acute myocardial infarction. These patients were um, uh, considered to have revascularization by uh, angioplasty, they had to have a fully occluded coronary artery at the time of admission, and they had to have no visible collaterals because we know that collaterals protect from acute myocardial infarction. So it was sort of a model very similar to the, what we do in the, in the animal, uh, in the laboratory uh, experiments. We randomized patients into two groups, a control group and a group with, with post-conditioning intervention. Then the, the PCI cardiologist was reopening the artery by angioplasty. In the, in the control group, he was doing nothing else as usual after reperfusion. Whereas in the post condition group, we had to re-occlude the artery, just like we do in animal models. So we decided to wait for less than one minute and re-inflate the angioplasty balloon in the artery to occlude the artery for one minute, and then deflated the balloon, and when waited one minute, and when we do this three or four times, just because this is this algorithm that reduces infarct size in the rabbit model. So we had no other uh, reason to choose this specific timing of, uh, of occlusion and uh, de-occlusion of the angioplasty balloon. And then we measure infarct size either by cardiac enzyme release or on magnetic resonance imaging. 
So we had uh, uh, this is a cumulative uh, data we have we have performed so far in the last two or three years. You can see that the, the whatever the group patient received the same type of treatment, beta blockers, calcium blockers, statin, ACE inhibitors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the two groups are comparable with respect to the uh, additional treatment they received uh, for their acute myocardial infarction. Uh, at the time of discharge, the two groups of patients also have been treated in the same manner, whatever the, the, the treatment uh, uh, applied for uh, the infarction. Now, if you want to compare any intervention that reduces infarct size in patients, you have to do it in the same way as for animal models. And we know that infarct size depends on three things that are very important. The first thing is the time of occlusion, the, time, the duration of ischemia. The second thing is the area at risk, that is the amount of myocardium that is ischemic during the uh, coronary artery occlusion period. And the third thing is what is the amount of collateral flow to the ischemic area during the coronary occlusion? We know that in animal models we ought to measure the three determinants to compare two groups. And what, what is the problem? So we should do that in patient too. And what, how to do that in patient? The first thing is that we don't know how to measure collateral flow in patient in acute settings. That is, we, we, we could do this by PET scan or contrast echo or spectre In emergency situation, we have no time to do that in practical conditions. So what we did is that we simply eliminated patient with visible collaterals in our study in order to avoid to dilute the data by patients that are anyway protected by their collateral circulation. Second, we had to measure the area at risk. The area at risk is the amount of myocardium below the coronary occlusion. To do this in clinical practice is, is in emergency situation is very difficult. So we, we used a very simple way that had been published before. We performed an LV angiogram and assess the amount of akinetic segments with respect to the circumference of, of the LV cavity. And we end up with a percentage with this, in this anterior infarct, the B2C area is the area at risk because it is akinetic during, before reopening the artery. So we can measure or estimate area at risk in patient. The third element, that is the duration of ischemia, is the time between the onset of chest pain and the time of reopening of the artery. It is an estimation, but it is better than nothing. So we, have, we are able to measure the three determinants or to consider the three determinants of the infarct size in patient. Based on this, we, we should find in patient what we find in the mouse model or in the rabbit model, that is a correlation between infarct size and area at risk. The larger the area at risk, the larger the infarct size in control animals, and the, the post-conditioning effect, the infarct size reduction effect, is demonstra demonstrated by the shift of the regression line downward uh, with respect to the control line. And in fact, this is what we, we have shown in, in our patients. We can represent the data in, in two ways. On the left part, you have the cardiac enzyme release as a function of time, the cumulative uh, release of, of creatine kinase. You can see that in the control group, you have all this amount of enzyme that is released, whereas in the post-condition group, the area under the curve is smaller by 36%. The other way, considering the area at risk, is that this is in fact size, cardiac enzyme release, expressed as a percentage of the area at risk. You have, just like in the mouse or rabbit model, a correlation between infarct size and area at risk in untreated patient. And you can see that the, the empty circles represent post-conditioned patient. They are all or almost all below the control line indicating that for any amount of ischemic tissue, infant size are smaller if, if patients have been post-conditioned. So this was the first evidence that post-conditioning, this simple balloon reinflation can save 
uh, uh, reduce infanticide in patients. Uh, Twelve months later, we were able to show that by ECHO, there is an improvement in wall motion stress index or strain rate in aging or ejection fraction, showing that reducing infarction acutely can translate into an improvement of contractile function. Now, performing a brief coronary occlusion and in balloon inflation is not always simple in clinical practice. The best would be to find a drug that, given before uh, reperfusion, would do the same thing, would rescue or save tissue uh, from reperfusion necrosis. There are a lot of candidates, and I know that David is running a trial in Spain trying to see whether adenosine given in, um, into this condition is able to do as well as uh, angioplasty post-conditioning. There are other drugs, and we in, in France wanted to use a, a special drug called cyclosporin A. I'm sure that you know that cyclosporin is used to prevent acute rejection in transplanted patients. But it has another uh, action. Cyclosporin A can act also on the mitochondria to prevent MPTP, permeability transition pore opening, because it acts on a, on a specific cyclophilin D protein in the, in the mitochondrial matrix. This protein in uh, ischemia reperfusion condition translocates into the membrane and uh, opens a pore in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And when this pore opens, at a some, to some extent, it can lead to cell death. Cyclosporin A is preventing the translocation of cyclophilin D into the inner membrane and preventing the opening of the pore. So, in theory, it could prevent cell death. This has been shown by many investigators a long time ago. And just to recall, we, have, we, we, we as others, showed that in the rabbit model of acute myocardial infarction, if, if we performed acute myocardial infarction in rabbit, we can reduce infarct size. Please look at the, the field circle, which represents the mean value of infarct size. When compared to control, giving cyclosporia either before ischemia or at the time of reperfusion, reduce infarct size by 50% approximately. So in animal models, it is known that cyclosporin A is reducing infarct size. The best demonstration for the role of permeability transition in animal models comes from uh, the creation of a specific cyclophilin D knockout mice by uh, Nakagawa and colleagues and also by Baines and colleagues in the United States. And they showed that these mice, the cyclophilin D minus minus knockout mice, have a very resistant pore to, to, to opening and they spontaneously develop very small infarct. They are protected against infarction simply because they miss this protein that triggers pore opening. And this is the demonstration that spontaneously this protein is involved in cell death. We have shown in, in this is preliminary data from our group, when we isolate adult calumicide from this 